welcome back to my kitchen. Um, so today I'm going to be creating an Indian inspired dish. Um, this is not an authentic recipe, um, it's just something that I put together, but it's inspired um, from Indian cooking because it has a lot of Indian spices in it and some Indian cooking techniques. So go easy on me. <laughs> um, I just wanted to show you some things. This is going to be, um, there's going to be chickpeas and there's going to be squash in here. And I wanted to show you this squash I found at the market. I thought that it was just beautiful. So I bought a whole bunch. I don't know what it's called. Um, and it's a little bit soft, but it's not like a summer squash that you can just saute. I think you need to cook it for a little bit longer. Um, so I'm going to be sort of experimenting with this. We'll see how it comes out because I've never cooked with this before. Um, and another thing I wanted to show you is black mustard seeds. Um, I had two friends visiting, and one of them is Indian, and she brought me back some black mustard seeds from New York because I couldn't find them anywhere in Taiwan. So thank you very much, Lena. And I'm going to be um, experimenting with these a little bit, so I'm excited about that. And I also want you to know that this is a pretty quick meal that I'm going to put together tonight. I think I can cook the whole thing in about 40 minutes total. Um, I'm going to be using instant jasmine rice, and instead of dried chickpeas, I'm going to be using canned chickpeas. So that should cut the cooking time quite a bit. So stay tuned, and I hope you The ingredients we're going to be needing is um, one half onion. Um, I'm going to be using these squash, but you can use whatever squash you have, acorn squash, butternut squash. You can even try this with some summer squash. One can of chickpeas, garbanzo beans, chechi beans, whatever you want to call them. Um, two cloves of garlic, some ginger, some cilantro, um, and also a chili. I'm going to be using one Thai chili and some tomatoes. And for the spices, we're going to need some salt, some turmeric, coriander powder, cumin seeds, um, cayenne pepper or ground red pepper, black mustard seeds, and garam masala, but I didn't have garam masala, so I'm just using this ma madras curry powder instead. ready to go and a way to test it is you can just drop one cumin seed in there and if it starts to bubble up it's ready okay so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add one teaspoon of cumin seed and one teaspoon of black mustard seed and you have to be careful because the black mustard seed pops so the cumin seed and black mustard seed Give it a little steak and shimmy. You don't want it to burn. You want it to fry for a few seconds. I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, and now I'm going to add my puree. So be careful because this is going to flutter. Give it a mix. And it smells unbelievably good. As soon as the puree hits, you just smell this amazing cumin scent. It smells awesome. Get that all in there. I'll let you see what that looks like. 
quick. So I'm going to mix the oil into the puree, and I'm just going to start to cook the puree. So I want the puree to cook on medium-high heat for about five minutes. Okay, so, so it's only been about two minutes, but now actually I'm going to add the spices. So what we need is we need a half a teaspoon of salt, or to taste. We need one tablespoon of coriander powder. So quite a lot of that, but that gives it a really nice flavor. Okay. Half a teaspoon of coriander, uh, of turmeric. Have a teaspoon of, of um, cayenne, or also to taste. Okay. All right, we're going to give that a stir. I'll show you what it looks like. And now we're going to cook this for five minutes. Okay, so the puree, or the sauce, has cooked for about five minutes. So, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the squash. So I have it all diced up here and ready to go. Give that a mix. And I'm also going to add about a half a cup of water. You're creating a nice all right so I'm going to give that a mix and now I'm going to cover this and I'm going to let this cook for about five to seven minutes okay mm, okay so it's been about ten minutes and I actually added about one cup of water in total um, I guess maybe because the squash is a lot more than I would normally put in, I felt like I wanted more gravy, so I just added, you know, like a half a cup more of water. So now at this point, I'm going to add the can of chickpeas. I just rinsed this so it wouldn't have any of that sort of, uh, you know, aluminum can kind of flavor to it. And I'm going to dump these on in here. Give it a mix. And I'm going to cover it, and I'm going to cook it for another about seven minutes. And then you'll see the last step after that. So I'll be back. Okay, so I let that cook for about seven minutes. I'll show you what it looks like. And I tested the squash, and it's almost completely cooked through. It probably needs about maybe three more minutes. Um, another thing that I've been doing is I've just been kind of like mashing the chickpeas a little bit, not all of them, just a few of them against the pot just to sort of help make the sauce nice and thick because the starches and the chickpeas will help really thicken it up and make it nice. So now my last step is I'm going to take a teaspoon of this Madras curry powder. If you have garam masala that would probably work better. Um, and put it on in. Now, I'm not really sure why you put garam masala in last. You only cook it for about one minute. So, if someone's watching out there and they're Indian and you'd like to um, inform me why you don't cook the garam masala with the other sauces, please let me know because I'm really curious. Um, okay. And one more step. So, I put the Madras curry in, and I'm taking about maybe one heaping tablespoon of cilantro and putting it in there. And I'm going to mix that in. And I'm going to let this cook for one more minute, and then I can plate it up. So I'll see you back at the plating. Okay, so I'm going to take a bite. Um, I just topped it off with some yogurt, and I have some yogurt on the side here if I want to add a little bit more. It just helps kind of give it like a nice fresh tartness. Okay. 
And I just want to let you know that if you don't add the yogurt to it, this is a completely vegan meal. So if you're vegan, this is a great thing to try. Mm. It's so good. Mm. It's about really, really good. It's perfectly spicy. It's not too hot at all. And the squash is really, really nice. It's almost similar to, it has the same taste as like spaghetti squ squash, if you've ever tried that. It kind of tastes like that. It's very good. So I hope you give this recipe a try and let me know how it comes out. And until next time, bye-bye.